Hey guys, welcome to my garden. Today I have another mindful garden walk for you, which will also double as a tour of the flower garden. And I'm also gonna pop over to the vegetable garden in the second half. Um, if you didn't catch my first video on mindfulness, I will link that at the end of this video. When we say we're going for a mindful garden walk, what I mean is I'm going to be using the garden as a tool to practice mindfulness. And you can practice mindfulness um, pretty much in any point of your day. You can practice mindfulness while you're eating, while you're brushing your teeth, uh, taking a walk around the block, um, at a park, forest preserve, um, in, in your own yard. So I like to use my garden. I find that my garden is very helpful for me um, to practice this and to just manage stress and just everyday anxieties and um, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. Uh, there's a lot of stress. <laughs> um, so it's just important to take some time to take care of yourself and have some moments of not going down the rabbit hole and chasing those negative thoughts, just moments of being in the present moment. Um, because when you're in the present moment um, and you're in a safe space, you don't need to think about all those other things that you're stressed out about. So right now, I'm in my garden, I'm safe, I don't need to think about uh, some of the other stressors going on in my life right now. All I need to think about right now is what I'm seeing and hearing and feeling and smelling in my garden space. So I'm going to take you around and let's just see what we observe and what's blooming. Um, and I do just want to add that practicing mindfulness does not mean uh, that, oh, everything's positive and we're only going to think about positive things and negative thoughts don't matter. Um, that's not true. Mindfulness is just about observing what's going on in the in the present moment. But if you do have, um, you know, a negative thought come up, um, or you find yourself thinking about, you know, starting to st wander and think about other things, just sort of rem gently reminding yourself to come back to the present moment because we don't need to do that right now. You know, we can save that for for later. Right now is just about um, what's going on in this moment. So with that, I'm going to start with some of the flowers. I'm sitting on my porch right now. So to my right, I have a little flower patch and some pots. my left I have some more pots we have some peppers over here so we're just gonna get up and walk around and see what's blooming today so uh, one thing I like to do is just start off by taking a deep breath and sort of setting the intention to be mindful um, I can hear the birds are pretty noisy this morning, but it's a nice sound. Um, I like to start off by taking a deep breath and just setting the intention to be mindful in the next few minutes or however long I've decided I want to practice this. And sometimes I notice when I take a deep breath and, and really pay attention to it I and pay attention to what I'm smelling and, and what that sensation feels like, I realize I haven't taken a, a deep, good breath in a long time. So 
I'd encourage you to take a deep breath too and just, you know, when was the last time you took a deep breath and really just, you know, noticed how that felt? It can feel pretty good. All right, let's get up and see what's going on today. So I've noticed these day lilies in the past uh, couple of days have really started popping. And these were planted before we moved in, so I'm not sure exactly which varieties they are, but we have a few different varieties of lilies. This is more of a peachy pink color, and these are more of a fiery red-orange, very summery. There's some yellow ones over here too. So the bee balm is still blooming. I noticed some hummingbirds over here yesterday evening enjoying the bee balm. And then our lobelia just started to bloom. So this is another native plant in my area. Um, this is Queen Victoria lobelia. Another, the common name for it is cardinal flower. So that's another favorite of butterflies and hummingbirds. You can see by the shape of the flower, that tube-like shape, that this is something that a butterfly or a hummingbird would be more attracted to. I also love the deep purple burgundy color of the foliage. Locks just started blooming too, so this is really looking pretty good. Flax has a really nice, delicate smell. It's very soft smelling, if that makes sense. There's more that's getting ready to bloom over here. And the black-eyed Susans just started blooming and they are looking amazing. To me, this is summer. Another native plant, by the way. still going. This is um, Autumn Joy Sedum. This is starting to get some buds on it. It's always a bittersweet moment for me when I see that because I know that 
Um, these bloom in the fall. Um, so they're beautiful, but I'm also like, ugh. That means fall's coming and summer is on its way out. But it's all part of the natural rhythm of things. I have some white cone flowers there. Black-eyed Susans. The purple flowers are balloon flowers. So these are kind of interesting because they, um, this is what the bud looks like. And then it sort of gradually swells and gets bigger <clears throat> and turns purple. And then eventually when it's ready to bloom, it just sort of pops open. sort of like a balloon. It's just kind of fun to have. That's a perennial. Then I have these uh, oriental lilies, which are very pretty, but I actually had ordered um, white lilies and so I planted them as uh, bulbs in the spring and then they bloomed and they were these pink oriental lilies which were they're still really pretty but they were not what I was expecting <laughs> so that was kind of a funny surprise This is our shade garden. Lots of hostas. I like the hosta blooms. I know a lot of gardeners grow hostas just for the foliage and will cut the blooms, but I like them. I think they look really nice just sort of bobbing above the leaves. And the bees like them too. the different variation in color just in these three plants right here. The sun's starting to try to come out. It's been cloudy and a little bit rainy the last couple of days, but we really needed the rain. It was really dry. There's 
is one of my other pollinator patches. So this one is full of cone flowers. And the bees have been all over them. There's one hiding right now. A little breezy today. Lots of milkweed. Just done flowering, so it's starting to form seed pods. A lot of noises in the neighborhood going on today. I have some black and blue salvia. I picked this up at, off the clearance rack at the hardware store. So this was only like three bucks. Really cool looking. As the leaves are like a bright green and then the flower stems are this really dark, almost black color. And then you get these deep blue flowers. It's an annual, though, in my area. And the Leatris is blooming, or a Prairie Blazing Star, I think is what it's called. This is another native prairie plant in my area. Planted these from bulbs last spring. Seen a lot of bees and butterflies visiting these. These are interesting too because they have these tiny little flowers and then when they open they have these long, they almost look kind of furry. Of course, we have Japanese beetles eating everything.
own flowers. So many different types of bees. We usually, when we think of pollinators, we think of the traditional honeybee, but a lot of bee, different, uh, different types of bees that are native visiting our flowers. They're all important. I'm gonna check out the vegetable garden. I haven't been over here at all today. This is our squash and corn patch. Uh, we may have overdone it with the squash. We also have melons in there. Um, Kind of hard to see where one plant ends and another plant begins. Let's see. No zucchini today. Oh, here's a melon. Two melons. These are cantaloupes, I believe. We also have butternut squash. Here's one right here. Butternut. We also planted acorn squash in there. So far, I've mostly seen uh, the cantaloupe and butternut squash. Our sweet corn, I don't know if we're gonna get any sweet corn this year. We had a really um, big uh, northern corn rootworm beetle problem <laughs> um, that basically came over and just devoured uh, the, the silk off of the corn cobs. Um, but the beetles seem like they might be uh, winding down. I've seen a lot less of them, so maybe the, the newer corn um, we'll survive and maybe we'll still get some. We'll have to see. There's a giant melon in there. Not seeing any acorn squash though. I saw one, but that's, that's all I've seen so far. Gonna have a lot of melons though, it looks like. There's another one in here. And they're escaping. <laughs> we also planted some pickling cucumbers. So. This is our first year planting these and we've never made pickles before. So this is gonna be a fun experiment this year to make some homemade pickles. They're 
getting ready. There's a lot of flowers on here too. And this is from a deer because we have deer that walk through here and like to nibble anything that's hanging out of the garden. is sweet potatoes. This is also our first year growing sweet potatoes, so these are all the vines. We just have it covered because we read that a lot of different animals like to nibble on sweet potato vines, so we're just keeping them under some mesh. We also keep our beans under mesh because the deer come into our garden and eat all of our bean sprouts so we've tried a million different things and the mesh seems to be what has worked the best so far tomatoes are getting close These are some heir, uh, heirloom varieties that um, we had to take a lot of leaves off because they have blight. Actually all of our tomatoes have blight on them, but some of these heirloom tomatoes seem to be hit harder, um, so we'll see if these have enough time to ripen up. We're in the process of clearing out this bed. And then we, this is where we had all of our greens, lettuce, kale, we still have, we have to pull that kale. Um, we had beets, we have some carrots in here, so we're in the process of clearing this out. And then we're gonna replant so that we have a fall crop of lettuce and beets and carrots. Got some peppers. These are bell peppers. They're looking really good. Some sort of chili pepper. I'm not sure. My husband's the chef, so. He plants different types of peppers for cooking. These are tomatillo plant. Lots of flowers, but I'm not seeing any actual tomatillos yet. These have kind of a cool flower. Those have like a, I don't know if you can see, like a blue purple center. Paste tomatoes coming in, getting close. We thought we purchased the bush variety, but we ended up with the indeterminate variety, so we've had to keep uh, they just keep go growing up, so we've had to keep them staked and tied. 
What are the fun surprises that happen when you're gardening? Oh, this one's starting to ripen. Oh no. Let's blossom and rot. Hopefully not all of these have that. Nope. You know, gardening is um, a great teacher, or nature is a great teacher of patience and um, managing disappointments or <laughs> unexpected events. Um, You spend all this time nurturing and growing these plants, and then, you know, despite that, Mother Nature may have other plans. <laughs> you know, a storm can come through and knock over, break a bunch of plants. You can get different, you know, like this blossom end rot. Um, kind of have to be able to roll with the punches and not, you know, that's sort of what mindfulness is about is, you know, not letting things take you to a really bad place, not going down the rabbit hole and perseverating on things and stewing on things, just kind of, you know, taking things as they come and Doing what you have to do. These are some cherry tomatoes. This is sort of another front um, pollinator garden I have. More milkweed. These are called false sunflower. And the bees are all over this today. Looks like we have some raspberries that are ready to be picked too. I need to get out here and get these before the bugs do, or the birds. I think this is where I'm going to leave you. So I hope that you enjoyed this mindful walk. I hope that it encourages you to get out into your own green space and your own yard, plant some things, 
plant some flowers, plant some vegetables. Um, but if you can't, just to take time to, for yourself to get out and enjoy nature, even if it's just uh, a walk around the block or a trip to the park. Um, so, if you want to see more mindful garden walks, garden tours, um, or just general gardening videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions about anything I talked about or anything you saw in the video, because I don't talk about every single plant in every video, uh, feel free to leave a comment below and I will answer any questions you have. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.